Hello, it's day 134 of the Liberator project. And today I should have gone down to sort of southwest London to do some music with James and uh, there's reasons why that didn't happen. As you know, things have been a bit tight for me uh, recently. Now I've got money in my Stripe account because I have I have sponsors, which I'm very, very grateful for. Unfortunately, um, I couldn't transfer that into my bank account because that's on hold in case any of my sponsors have second thoughts and want their money back. So uh, let's hope they don't. But uh, so couldn't afford the petrol. Oh, excuse me, just knock my down. I couldn't uh, afford the petrol and the day out. So I had to call it off. Now, obviously, you know, James stood me up the other week. And I feel a bit bad because I've been trying to do this now for about three weeks, maybe a month, and we haven't we haven't done it. And, uh, you know, well, James said he'd forgive me if I read out a statement. So I've got this on this card here. And it says, I pussied out because I was scared of James's amazing guitar solos. Well, OK, the things I do for an easy life. And that's not really true, because actually, I, I think uh, I think James is a very good guitarist and I like his solos a great deal. And also, it's like, I'm not a guitarist. I don't care if I mess up on the guitar because I play keyboards and drums. So, you know, it, uh, yeah, if he outclassed me, well, I would really hope he does because, uh, you know, I'm just doing it for fun. So anyway, unfortunately, uh, no music today, but I will actually try and perhaps at the weekend, I will try and do some music then just on, on my uh, on my own in the bathroom and hopefully next week you know I can sort out uh, finances and I can go down and we can record a few uh, a few David Bowie songs maybe some Newman as well possibly some Auger so uh, we'll see how that goes but uh, anyway I'm sorry I have to let you down on that uh, today what I have been doing today is that um, I've made myself uh, some soup because you know times are tough and, and soup's always good especially in this cold dark weather it's really nice to have a pot of uh, a pot of stew on the, on the stove the stove at all times and uh, that's something I do like about you know Russian households you've always got the big pot of stew so if you're cold and feeling a bit peckish you can tuck into something now um I'll show you my my soup it uh, now I haven't done a cooking video today because um <laughs> I didn't have enough cheap wine, but also this is not anything special. I mean, it's um, it was sort of cobbled together about from what I had in the house. It's not a fantastic meal, and I'm pretty sure you can all make soup if you if you think about it. And um, so what I did was potatoes, carrots, and some uh, Chinese leaf or cabbage with some salt. Put that into a pot. Then you need some pepper, uh, oregano, some dill some bay, a couple of bay leaves, some um, barley. And then into that, I put a tin of acacia, which is the uh, Russian food I got from my emergency uh, Russian army rations, which is beef with more pearl barley. And uh, yeah, that makes the basis of soup. Now, as I only had one tin of cassia left, what I had to do to uh, beef it up a bit was to put in a, a couple of stock cubes. Now, that's something that I would really never really never do in, in proper cooking but you know uh, times are times are hard and uh, I, I felt the soup needed a bit more of a a beef kick than it had so I put a couple of stock cubes in and actually it's delicious um my only criticism with my soup is perhaps I perhaps I put a little bit too much pepper in it but um you know it's, it's cold so you want something that uh, warms you up so not a big problem Anyway, that's uh, that's been today, really. Now, that's the end of the Liberator project today. But I will carry on talking about um, going out with uh, someone that is uh, mentally ill. <laughs> it, so we can uh, we can carry on with the uh, relationship. But if you're not interested, don't downvote me. You know, that's that's a bad that's a bad thing to do. What you want to do is you want to upvote me and share it with your friends, possibly uh, support the channel. You know, and, uh, you know, generally, yeah, I, I don't, bad voting, bad, don't, you know, that's a bad button, don't do it. Right, so anyway, goodbye to those people, and now I carry on talking about um, I, I did, my disastrous, well, one of my disastrous relationships, because, you know, unfortunately, I have been a few, and, uh, you know, I haven't got into uh, the girl from Estonia yet, so let's, let's carry on, let's carry on. Now, um... Going out with someone that's a dom is a bit hard because unless, you know, if you're not into that scene, 
And, uh, you know, there's several things she said to, to uh, guys and slaves, you know, having bad times in their life. And, and I didn't think it was very healthy. And I certainly wouldn't have said things like that, you know, to, uh, to someone that perhaps needed counselling. You know, it, uh, things involving melons and snowmen. But uh, I, you know, I, she pointed out, you know, I knew she was a Don when we first met. So, you know, I, I can't really, I couldn't really complain about that too much, even though I wasn't, um, I really wasn't very, uh, very happy about it. And uh, also, you know, like um, she was quite, um, you know, she's obviously quite a reasonable actress. She was quite quirky and inventive. And, you know, there's... You know, I'm not I'm looking back. Yes, it was very bad, but you've got to say she had things going for her that were very good. You know, it. Um, she was, you know, very. Um, I said she's interesting, but yeah, she's sort of quirky and inventive, and um, you know, she was good company in the uh, in the right uh, moments. However, um, you know, the hindsight's a wonderful thing. Looking back, there were several things that were weird, like. Um, for example, um, one day in the kitchen, all the, the cupboards were all full of dirty dishes that she put back by accident because she argued that I told her to clean the kitchen. Well, <laughs> you know, bear in mind, I was working all day and she had nothing to do in the house. It's like you can at least do the washing up, but she instead didn't do the washing up. She just put everything away dirty, which was even worse because then I couldn't trust anything. So I had to get everything out of the cupboards and wash it all just in case because, you know, and, uh, I like things to be clean and hygienic and that, that sort of I didn't trust what was in the cupboards anymore so and then of course there was a, um, a whole convoluted story which I won't talk about um, where uh, the upshot was that I lost my Capri I lost one of my uh, cars I had a Mark III um, uh, metallic grey uh, Capri with a, a, a Burton race spec engine in it it was wonderful and for a whole series of ridiculous um, things that happened unfortunately that uh, that was taken away and I lost it now um, you know it uh, it didn't need to happen and you know again it was you know I was going in and out of hospital so I relied on her to sort things and you know yes it seems a bizarre story but you know at the time what are you going to do I had, I had bigger fish to fry as they say it uh, I had more things to worry about than than a car so, you know, for sort of, uh, you know, six months or so, things were were fine. And she would tell me stuff that didn't make sense. You know, it was like she'd tell me something and I'd go, it doesn't really ring true. Or, or there was some some sort of, uh, you know, inconsistency in the story. Like she said she hadn't spoken to this person for six months. And then she'd tell me about a conversation she had with her. And there was, you know, it was uh, it was a bit strange. But... You know, she had nothing to gain from these stories. So that's why I sort of thought, well, OK, you know, it. Um, I wouldn't I, I'd just tell someone something and I wouldn't uh, it wouldn't occur to me that it was it was it was a lie. And, you know, obviously, like the, the girl who was still married had things to lie about and hide. And she was a remarkably good liar. She could just completely compartmentalize her life. But, um, you know, she had nothing to gain from these lies. So it's like, well, if she's got no reason to lie and I, I've got no evidence, got no proof one way or the other, I just sort of go, well, OK, that's a bit bizarre, but, you know, OK, whatever. I, I, I can sort of I can sort of believe something happened, maybe or it, it wasn't important, though, um, you know, with no evidence, I tended to, you know, she was my partner, so I, I tended to believe her. But... Uh, now, about this time, she was in Staffordshire, so she was alone. She'd given up her job and uh, she was just sort of out of touch with people, really, other than, you know, she'd bully some slaves around. But uh, I think she was sort of a bit out of touch with reality. And I think that's what slowly sent her mad. You know, we we're only talking here, you know, sort of a few months. It wasn't as though she was on her own for years, you know, it was a couple of months. But I think she went more and more insane. Now, I didn't know anything about her mental illness when we started going out. It only became, you know, more apparent. And uh, there was one particular event which, which to me, just, you know, perhaps I was in denial, but it made it very clear to me. And um, she she couldn't tell sort of dreams from uh, reality. So she would dream something and then assumed it happened. And that's, you know, but... Um, 
I think everyone has gone has done something. I thought, oh, I thought I'd done that, or I haven't. And you realise that you must you couldn't have done it because the evidence supports the fact you didn't. So you go, well, okay, I'm I I made a mistake. I was wrong, and clearly I haven't done that because the evidence is clear cut. So um, one day, you know, I'd gone up there to, to Staffordshire, and, and you know, I keep going on about this, but I was in a terrible state of health. I, you know, I was really was suffering. So I'd driven up, you know, from work, I'd had a hard week, and then I'd driven up to Staffordshire to see her. And, you know, after I had something to eat, I was, you know, I was very tired. I needed to get some sleep. I felt dreadful. So um, she'd said, oh, don't worry, I'll do the dishes. You just go to bed. I was like, wow, that's yes that's that's really yeah that's really good of her yes thank you do that and then um you know she came up to bed almost immediately and i was like well there wasn't time for you to do the dishes and clean up the kitchen you know before you come upstairs so that seemed a bit wrong but you know she assured me that she'd done it and and also it's like i was feeling grotty and i wasn't going to you know okay she's done it that's that's all i wanted i'm i'm happy i can you know go to sleep now the um the next day I went down to the kitchen and it was like an absolute bomb had hit it. You know, it was all the stuff that, you know, I'd, I'd made when I cooked and nothing had been cleaned up or washed at all. And uh, she came down and she said, oh, someone else must have done that. <laughs> and it's like, uh, we're the only people in the house. She goes, well, that wasn't, wasn't our stuff. And I'm going, but this is, this is the saucepan I use to cook. These are, these are the plates, you know, these, this is, this is my plate. This is your plate. You know, it's like, and, um, she accused me of framing her and it was like well the evidence is here you know like you remember you said i said i, I was feeling ill you you offered to, to clean up for like you know one of the rare moments i was like yes fantastic and uh, she went ballistic with me and uh you know at that time that was the first time i went yes yeah, she's not a bit quirky she is absolutely insane she is mentally ill and uh you know what do you do it's um you know she, she was my partner so what do you do to help someone like that and the big trouble is like when you counsel someone they've got to actually want help and she was like so aggressive and fighting over this and you know she, she was almost you know, getting on like she was going to be violent and it was like you know she what's she going to do she's going to stab me or something this is this is not just nuts. And I, and I kept being totally rational. She couldn't browbeat me into agreeing with her like she would be with her slaves. I'm going, no, this is our, this is our stuff. Like, you know, trust your eyes. <laughs> you know, here we are. So that was, uh, that was the moment I realised that, no, this was not, this was not endearing quirkiness. This was actual flute, full blown insanity and mental illness. So that was the first time. And then, of course, you look back and go, Oh, oh God. And you see things that she said and you go, no, that was all, that was all in her head. That was all madness. So um, around this time, um, because she hadn't been working, she'd been claiming benefit for the rent and I'd lent her the money to, so she could keep paying the rent on her house. Um, the council had agreed to pay her, it was about 4,800, 4,600. It was in that sort of order. I can't remember the actual figure but um, a little bit less than sort of £5,000. But the letter that got from the council said, uh, we need you to confirm your details before we can transfer this into your bank. And she says, well, I've done that. And I'm like, well, yes, but you know, you know what bureaucracies are like, you know, that mess ups happen. Let's just confirm the details and they'll pay you, you know, nearly £5,000. That's really good because then you can pay me back. And, uh, you know, we, we really need, need that money. And uh, she refused. She goes, I've done it once. And I'm going, well, OK, yes. I don't know if she had or not, given the kookiness. But um, I was like, well, OK, yes, you've done it. But you need to do it again because they've messed up. They're idiots, but they're willing to give you £5,000 if you do this. So why don't we just do this? And uh, she flatly refused. She goes, well, I've done it. I don't see why I should do it again. And I go, well, the reason why you should do it again is because... They give you a lot of money and, you know, things were, uh, you know, things were very tight for us. You know, we really did need that money. And, you know, I was working as hard as I could, given my uh, state of health, to keep money coming and to keep everything going. And it was like, I certainly didn't sign up for that. I had my own mortgage to pay. And, you know, suddenly I was paying her rent and her bills. And it was a case of, um, well, you know, it's... <laughs> 
you know we need that money it's it's so easy to do this so this went on for for, for weeks and i was i was working hard and i had argument after argument with her about this it was a case of look it's why is this so hard the the office is literally like a mile and a half from your house you could walk there you know if you wanted it's and get the bus in you know get a cab it, it's it's a sake if you go into this office giving these forms they will give you all this money to cover your rent and that's we need that you know i can't I can't keep going like this. I can't keep working myself to death. You know, it's, uh, you know, we, we need this. It'll make things a lot easier. So this went on for weeks. Big arguments about it. And uh, and then, of course, I tweaked that she was insane. And this, what do you do? Well, something I really needed to do before tackling the other problems is to get this sorted out because then her rent's being paid at least. And uh, that's not a drain on me. So, um... I got her to promise that first thing on Monday morning she would go down to this office and get it signed because there's a deadline. She was coming up to the deadline and if the deadline passed she would lose it all. So um, I even gave her money for a cab so she could do it. She had no excuse and uh, you know she assured me and I said before I left do it. She, yes I'll do this. So it was my first thing. Yes promised. So I phoned up on the uh, Monday from work. I was working down in Essex and I phoned her at lunchtime and uh, you know, I said, you know, have you made, just to check, but I, I did phone her most days anyway, but, um, you know, she'd done it and she said she hadn't. It was like, but why? You know, it, it's like, why? It's, it was a beautiful day. It was an ideal day to get out of the house, just go into town and do this. Um, anyway, um, so what do you do? It's... Uh, she said she'd go in the afternoon. And I said, well, okay, we'll go in the afternoon. Uh, you know, go in the afternoon. And then she went, oh no, I'll go Wednesday. And it's like, no, go now. It's a beauty, you know, it might be raining on Wednesday. Then you go, I can't go out because it's, it's raining. It's a lovely, you know, sunny day. I think it was like autumn, you know, it was, but a beautiful time. It was like, well, go today. Why are you not going today? You've got nothing planned at all for the rest of the week. You've got nothing planned for today you know you've got the money you've got the time it just go and do this and uh well she you know it uh, she just got angry with me and you know suddenly refused to uh, refuse to talk to me about this and uh, i think she hung up and everything and it was like well you know i'm under stress because you know really desperately needed this money and i'm dealing with my health and i'm at work and i'm tired you know I've, had to get up at sort of like you know four in the morning to get to work on time back in Essex from Staffordshire so certainly uh, not feeling like to tackle this but anyway in the evening I thought calm down have something to eat relax when I feel calmer I will phone her up and uh, you know when I'm able to deal with this I will do it and I phoned her up and uh, she said I've been having an affair it was like well I haven't because, you know, for one, you know where I am and, you know, you've seen my timesheets from work. I worked on a secure military um, base at the time and um, she, she, you know, she said I was having an affair with my ex. This is an ex I hadn't apparently seen for for years. You know, I hadn't seen this woman for years. I certainly was in no state of health to sort of, you know, there's a a thing isn't there I'm too old and tired for an affair well you know yes I was I wasn't going to do this anyway and um, you know she she uh, I said look I haven't been having... she was like adamant again it was like the situation with the disuse she was in a fantasy world and you can't be realistic with someone like that because well you know I said okay assuming I have been having an affair how would you know this she goes well I've read all your work emails now, um, I was not, I have nothing to hide. You know, I never, I never encrypted or hid any of my personal emails. She could log on and read my personal emails. Cause again, I, you know, completely open and honest. She, she could read what she wanted, but, um, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, she, if she said text, it was like, well, okay. Yeah. My texts are on my phone. So they were, they were secret, but my emails weren't. And uh, so she said it was my, uh, work emails. Now, Working in a sort of very secure military environment means that even I remotely could not access the work network. I could not read my own emails. So it was just impossible. 
and she was adamant that she'd read them all. And I'm like, but you cannot, you cannot read my emails from work because I can't even do that. It's impossible. And she was like, oh, I, I read them. And I go, well, if you had, that is a serious criminal offence because that means you're on a secure military system. You know, it's, uh, you know, maybe she hacked it. Well, well, I'm not sure her skills were that good. But if she had, that was a serious offence. And also, I had nothing to hide on my work emails because they were all about work. I wouldn't dream of putting any personal information on those, even to her. You know, it's a case of, no, 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 these are for work. I've got my own personal um, emails if I need that. Anyway... She was, uh, you know, screaming abuse at me over the phone, absolutely ranting and raving. And then she said she was too shaken by my behaviour to uh, to deal with the council. So she lost, she lost five thousand pounds, and uh, she blamed me for that. My fault, apparently, because I'd, 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 um, I was seeing someone behind her back. And uh, well, anyway, that weekend, you know, it, um, I felt, you know. Uh, I, I'm not making excuses. I was ill, you know, and it was I was tired and I was supposed to be going back to Kiel because I was doing some acting with the uh, Drama Society because, you know, I'm a bit of a thespian at times and uh, I was just too ill. I got home from work on the Friday and I tried to pack to sort of go up and deal with all this. But, you know, I was just in a dreadful state. I just thought, no, I've got to I've got to put my, uh, you know, I've got to put my health, um, you know, first and um you know she refused to to talk to me and that was that was it really um but she was just in this delusional world and you can't get through to someone like that because evidence facts being rational only apply if you're not insane so anyway that was the end of that well i'll go through the uh, obviously a pissed off insane dominatrix who's intelligent and inventive will Spend a lot of effort trying to make your life absolute hell and they can be vindictive and spiteful. So we go through the uh, revenge <laughs> and the next video if you're still interested. But, you know, this is this section of my videos is all about relationships. So uh, if you've watched this far, you knew what you're getting into. OK, thanks a lot. See you tomorrow. Goodbye.